First this half hour, the I-Team is investigating school security. It's been a year and a half now since a gunman went on a shooting rampage at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. In the wake of that tragedy, Governor McCrory assembled a task force, and they've been charged with funneling policy ideas to lawmakers here in Raleigh to keep our kids safe in the classroom. I-Team reporter Heather Walliga takes us inside local schools for a closer look at the innovative technology now being used, and she also shows us some of the surprising things students could be using for self-defense. It was one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. A nation watching in horror as a bloody scene played out at Sandy Hook Elementary. States across the country were forced to rethink the way they protect students, scrambling to make schools intruder proof. It became very apparent to us we needed to ramp up our security systems for public schools. Dr. Ben Matthews oversees building plans at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. From the blueprints to the fortress-like materials proposed for new schools across across the state. He reviews every option on the table. These are 44 Magnum bullets. This is bulletproof glass built to withstand one of the most powerful handguns on the market. It's now installed at the Pentagon. We're put in front of a window. This um, whiteboard, also bulletproof, fits inside a student's backpack and can be used as a shield in the event of a shooting on campus. But it's, it's a, an expense item, and, and uh, the bottom line, unfortunately, in many of these instances, is having enough funds to do these things. But some local school districts aren't letting money stand in the way of safety. Welcome to Richland Creek Elementary. How may I help you? Richland Creek Elementary in Wake County has some of the latest technology, and soon it will be in every new school in the county. The only way a visitor can get into this building is through this brand new buzz-in system. Once I hit this button, someone on the other side of the camera will unlock the door. But once I'm inside, I still have to wait inside this vestibule before I can get access to the school. The legislature just last session put a statute in place requiring panic alarms in all the schools. By 2015, every school in the state must install one. Johnston County schools already have them. For safety reasons, we aren't allowed to show you what they look like. When the buttons hit, it automatically sends off the alert and authorities know what that means. David Pierce, principal of Four Oaks Elementary, calls it an added peace of mind, easily accessed by teachers and administrators in several locations of his school. Four Oaks also now has a keyless entry system at each door. They're monitored by security cameras strategically placed to view every corner of the campus. I can see this anywhere that I'm on our school's network. Including his cell phone. I knew keeping kids safe would be a part of my job and educating our future but I never thought I would have to be worried about the livelihood. Is your school prepared to deal with an armed intruder? To the best of our ability, we are, we are ready. Um, I, I think in any instance, you never want to live that day. We all are prepared that it, and know that it could happen to us. More than half of North Carolina schools have already installed panic alarms. The General Assembly set aside $2 million in matching funds to help with the cost. Lawmakers earmarked another $7 million to beef up school resource officers across the state. Tomorrow, I'll take you inside their specialized training and show you how it's changing the way they keep your kids safe. For the IT Team Heather Walliga, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. Tonight, the I-Team is taking you inside a training program working to keep our kids safe at school. You'll see shooting simulators and barricade breaching devices at the largest and most comprehensive training ever for school resource officers in North Carolina. I-Team reporter Heather Walliga shows us how their skills are changing when it comes to protecting your child in the classroom. School resource officers aren't just dealing with bullies and drugs. They have to be prepared for any type of situation, including one like this where an active shooter barricades a door and they have just seconds to bust it open. Locked and no other way to get in. Students' lives at stake. The gunmen hold up on the other side of this 550-pound steel door. Seconds count when it comes to a shooting situation. These school resource officers are simulating an intense scenario. Using simple tools, this mobile classroom teaches them how to quickly breach the barricade. The specialized training is in high demand after tragedies at Virginia Tech and Sandy Hook put school safety under the microscope. I'm putting myself in a situation hey, what if this was me? You know, what would I do? Ebony so Moore is one of more than 400 SROs attending North Carolina's yearly week-long training seminar. Guess what, folks? You're going to draw your gun. 
and you may use your gun. From bullying to bomb threats to shooting simulations. Oh, go, 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 go. The way they're learning to protect students in the classroom is changing and more hands-on. At first we were taught, wait for your backup, but now you know, it's, it's like, go find the shooter. Well, I have some resource officers that are here for the first time, and it's been an eye-opener for those guys. Franklin County recently added SROs in elementary schools. It's part of an effort to beef up security. State lawmakers earmarked $7 million last session to add nearly 200 extra officers in North Carolina schools. An elementary school kid can carry a gun just like a high school kid can. So I think it's very important that all schools have resource officers. More than 1,400 SROs now patrol campuses across the state, but not every school has one, and school leaders say there aren't enough. And while each of them must be certified, their training may vary, training that could mean the difference between life and death in a real-life school shooting. You never know when that day is going to happen. So we have to expect the unexpected. The SRO training is the largest of its kind ever in North Carolina. By the end of the week, the goal is to have every one of them trained if they ever find themselves in a situation like this. For the I-Team, Heather Walliga, ABC 11 Eyewitness News.